All right, good morning. My name is Laura Latta and I'm the Director of Post-Secondary Partnerships and Research at Impact Tulsa. Uh, I'm thrilled to be joined today with three leaders in education who are doing incredible and innovative work in preparing students for life after high school with ICAP and real world learning experiences. We are joined today by Charles Page High School Principal Stan Trout and Assistant Principals Ryan Biven and Tim Ray. We are so excited to learn from them. You may have noticed that the speaker list has changed from what was advertised. Um, Superintendent Durkee and Mr. Sean Beard, who have both been incredibly instrumental in planning these ICAPS events, um, plan to join us for the session today, but we're called away to another administrative task. But we are so grateful for Mr. Trout and Mr. Ray for filling in um, and for Mr. Biffin as well and sharing their expert insight, ensuring that the show will go on. Before we begin the time together, we do want to take a moment to acknowledge that the land on which we learn and teach, live and grow um, is the traditional and unceded territory of the Osage, Muscogee, Caddo, Sioux and Kickapoo peoples past and present. We pay honor and respect to the elders past, present and future and to those who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land that we inhabit today as well. Okay. So to start, I'd like to provide some context and background information about Impact Tulsa and about ICAP in general. Impact Tulsa is part of the National Strive Together Network. Our focus is on helping every child from cradle to career succeed in school and in life. From kindergarten readiness to high school graduation to post-secondary completion and employment, Impact Tulsa uses Strive Together's principles of engaging the community, advancing equity, developing a culture of continuous learning and improvement, and leveraging existing resources within the community to promote the high quality education of every child. Impact Tulsa is a collective impact organization and nonprofit that partners with 21 different Tulsa area school districts, a host of nonprofit organizations and passionate business and civic sector leaders with a vision of high quality education for all students. We engage in collaborative community action focused on building that pathway from cradle to career by measuring what matters, aligning resources and sharing practices to create systems level change to advance outcomes and achieve economic mobility for all students. Like I said, we focus on six different education outcomes all the way from kindergarten readiness to post secondary entry and completion and we will be focusing on the second half of this trajectory today. Now a little bit about the ICAP. The ICAP is an individualized career academic plan that helps high school students uh, and middle school students as well map out and take the necessary steps to be successful after they graduate from high school. So starting in ninth grade or even earlier, students work with their school counselors and teachers to do things like creating a plan that leads to college and career goals, um, learning about potential careers that they can work toward, enrolling in the right courses that align with the student's goals, staying on track for graduation, preparing for college or workforce, and then um, participating in in-service learning and workplace environment activities during high school. So ICAP tasks are completed and submitted digitally and instructions for submission are provided by a student's teacher or a college and career coach or counselor, it really depends on, on the district. Um, the ICAP came from a few pieces of Oklahoma legislation. Um, for more information about these bills, I'm going to put them in the chat box so that you can visit them at a later time. Oklahoma is not the only state that requires students to complete an ICAP before graduation. In fact, at least 43 other states have individual learning plans similar to the ICAP. To learn more about what ICAPs include, access the Oklahoma EDGE website, which I'll put in the chat box as well. 
and it's hosted by the Office of College and Career Readiness at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. So why is the ICAP so important? Why are we here today having a conversation about it? Life beyond high school requires different and ever-changing competencies. The reality is that by 2025, three of four Oklahoma jobs will require education and training beyond high school. Um, during the ICAP process, students discover the pathways that fit their unique talents and learn what academic preparation and experiences will prepare them for in-demand careers. Some of those careers don't even exist when they graduate from high school. When students complete a meaningful ICAP process, they connect the relevance of their education and what they learn in school to their future goals. They create secondary and post-secondary course plans to pursue those goals. Um, they strategically select a post-secondary pathway to align, uh, to align with, uh, as well as self-defined college career and life goals. So they really take on a sense of ownership. Estab they establish better communication and engagement between school and home. So bringing in families, um, parents and guardians in that process, and then understand and demonstrate career exploration um, and career planning. So here's a link to a one pager from the Oklahoma State Department and more information, uh, as well as an ICAP 101 blog post from Impact Tulsa. Educators know that preparation for life after high school doesn't just start during senior year. It begins as early as elementary school with field trips and guest speakers, and then in middle school with job visits, and eventually in high school with volunteer experiences and internships and service learning projects. All of these things include more than just educators. Teachers cannot do it alone. Counselors cannot do it alone. They require the involvement of community members, um, post-secondary institutions, businesses, and workforce institutions. Before I pass it off to Mr. Trout, Mr. Biven, and Mr. Ray, I want to acknowledge and share appreciation for a team of people who've been working together since the end of last year to plan upcoming ICAP chats and an ICAP convening this fall. We're very fortunate to have Marissa Leitze, the Executive Director of College and Career Readiness, and Chelsea Hunt, the Executive Director of Work-Based Learning and Industry Engagement, both of whom are leading the ICAP work at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. Many of the individuals on this list, including Superintendent Durkee and Mr. Sean Beard, have years of learning and experience with ICAP um, that they've been very graciously sharing with the group. The purpose of these chats is to bring districts together and to share what's working well with ICAP implementation across the districts. So this week, we'll, we will highlight practices implemented at Charles Page High School. I'm so honored to introduce um, our three guests today. I'm going to start with Mr. Trout. Um, Stan Trout is the principal of Charles Page High School. Um, he has a 37-year career as an educator, uh, as a classroom teacher, a coach, and school administrator in Owasso and Sand Springs. Uh, Mr. Ryan Biven is assistant principal at Charles Page. He's entering his 18th year in education. After graduating from OSU in 2003, he began his career at Charles Page as a biology teacher. He spent the last eight years as an administrator in the Sand Springs District and currently holds the position of assistant principal. Um, he's also the district career tech director and manages the ICAP process a lot of hats to wear, which includes the internship program and business partner relations. And Mr. Ray, Mr. Tim Ray, um, he's the assistant principal at Charles Page High School in Sand Springs. He started his career in education in Texas in 2001 and eventually came to Sand Springs District in 2006. Mr. Ray is primarily in charge of remediation, programming, discipline, and attendance at Charles Page High School. He's been in administration since 2012 and in his current position for the last four years. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Trout, Mr. Biven, and Mr. Ray, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that they can share theirs. 
Good morning to everyone, uh, and thank you for having us here this morning. I'm Stan Trout, as I was introduced. I'm principal at Charles Page High School. I'm going to be just very brief and start out with um, a couple of introductory points, and then I'm going to turn it over to the young guys who actually do all of the work and let them present from here. I'm at this stage of my career, I'm kind of like the Queen of England. They just rolled me out for parades and other special occasions um, as needed, and they do most of the hard work around here. So Ryan, if you could share your screen real quick um, and start our presentation, that'd be really helpful. I think my main point in, in this, and I'm sort of filling Su Superintendent Durkee's role this morning since she's engaged in other work, is to talk about how ICAP has been such a perfect fit for our district. Sand Springs, as many of you probably know, familiar with the Tulsa area, is a working community. And we really lean into that. That's not something we say apologetically. We don't say working class in the sense that we have, we're behind the demographic eight ball. We really lean into that and embrace our identity as a working community. In many ways, West Tulsa, Sand Springs, Sepulpa, all of this out here, this is the breadbasket of Tulsa County, and we are a traditional working community. Charles Page founded this community on that basis and gave land to people who would put industry here to give jobs to the families who settled here. And I think it's really interesting that the original legislation that enabled ICAP in Oklahoma was sponsored by J.D. Nolan, a state senator from Sand Springs and fellow Charles Page High School class of 1977. So that's, uh, that's really an important part of that. And that's why ICAP resonated so well and so clearly with us in Sand Springs is because this is a great deal of who we are and it fit perfectly. So next slide, Ryan. This is my favorite slide. At Charles Page High School, we have a very beloved and very widely recognizable school motto and school mission that relates everything to student success, and that's who we are. And it's not a bunch of hollow words. It is truly who we are. And you can ask anybody in our community, ask anyone at our school, what are the three things? And they will all say, challenge minds, inspire hearts, and empower a community of learners. And everything that we do at Charles Page High School, from our professional learning communities, whereby our teachers create a curriculum and a system of assessment, to our system of tiered intervention that Mr. Ray manages, to our career pathways that Mr. Biven manages, relate to this single purpose of, of creating student success. We define student success very clearly as immediate success on either college, which means college enrollment without remedial coursework and or careers, which would entail industry certification, employment, and realistic work experience. So there again, already, just because of who we are and what our mission is as a school, ICAP relates directly to everything that we do. Um, next slide, Ryan. Um, many of you who are educators are familiar with this graph is the rigor and relevance framework. It's kind of Bill Daggett and his work. And it, the idea, the basic idea is that as students see relevance, as they see the relevance in what we are doing, we are able to engage them in higher and higher academic levels. And our hope is that the ICAP, the Career Pathways Student Internships, will allow our students to, to see the relevance of the high school curriculum and engage in that curriculum more deeply and more personally um, than ever. So that's, that is our goal. And if you look, I, it's, the graphic is a little fuzzy there at the bottom. If you look at that bottom right-hand corner and the two highest levels of learning identified here, if you were able to teach at a high level of relevance and a high level of rigor, you're helping students to apply everything that they have learned to real world predictable and unpredictable situations. And think about the world in which we live today and the challenges that we face as a country social justice and the global pandemic, we need students who are able to engage and to work meaningfully with what they have learned with unpredictable situations. Um, and that is what we do. And the second point that I would like to make is that ICAP and the student internship process and program has taught us a great deal. And it has changed the way that we practice as a school district in the sense that we have 
had to become very adaptable and very flexible and nimble in the way that we structure student schedules, the way that we build a student's day so that they're able to engage in college or in a work internship or Tulsa technology, virtual, providing virtual instruction as part of their day. And we have become pretty masterful. And when I say we, the real heroes are our virtual school director, Jay Roeder, and our counselors who have become masterful at, at building student days around this process. And what's cool about that right now is that I feel pretty confident that we're in a pretty good position to adapt student schedules and do student days in the face of this pandemic. So that when I, right now, as most school principals are, I'm getting phone calls, I'm getting emails from parents and students who are concerned about coming back to school and they wanna say, okay, can I still be a member of the band or can I still uh, go to TCC and take some courses at Charles Page High School but be at home where it's safe and where I feel comfortable for the rest of the day? We are able to confidently say yes because we've been doing that for a couple of years now with career internships. So. Um, we broke the mold a long time ago. We quit doing things traditionally and according to the way that things have always been a long time ago. And uh, we, are, we embrace enthusiastically the flexibility that you have to have in a high school schedule to allow students to have these kind of work experiences. So next slide. So if you'll pardon me, if you'll indulge me just a little bit, my, the, the, my favorite movie clip of all time. You know that great movie clip in Forrest Gump, that moment when Forrest realizes he's running with his leg braces and then as he has to go faster and has to get better, that his leg braces just flop apart and go flying everywhere and he gets this big smile on his face when he realizes that he can achieve just about anything. Well, that's kind of our experience at Charles Page High School. So the, the mean kids and the bicycles chasing forest, that's kind of onerous regulations. And the smile on our face is, is that notion that we get that, man, we can do things differently and we can serve students better if we become more and more flexible. So with that, uh, and I'll save you the video, I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan Biven and he's gonna talk about career pathways, the nuts and bolts, the meat and potatoes of how we serve students using ICAP. Thank you, Mr. Trout. That was, uh, uh, we should have played the video, I'm just saying. Uh, but uh, thank you for the introduction. And um, I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, uh, to kind of build off of what he just said, that we as a district, our superintendent, our principal, Mr. Trout, gives us the freedom um, to push the, push the barriers and, and to, uh, do what's best for students when we see fit. And, and if that doesn't fit the mold, that's okay. And um, that's what we've done. And I believe that that's why we've had some success with, with what we're doing. Um, we are a career pathways model school. Um, we've, we've been a career pathways model school for quite some time now. Um, our district's done a tremendous job of defining our pathways and putting coursework in place so that our students um, can, can take coursework that leads somewhere uh, that leads to industry certification or leads them to college or, or into an internship or some type of workplace experience and so um, that's kind of where we are right now as a district and uh, the ICAP process has, has really allowed us to focus in on that and, and take the next step in our journey. Um, some of the pathways that, that I'm talking about here, we are a project lead the way school. Um, we've been working on this for about five or six years now, putting coursework in place. We have a biomedical field. We have a four year program that, that leads um, students down a biomedical field from the ninth grade all the way uh, through their senior year. Same, same with engineering. We have a three-year program and computer science is a two-year program right now, looking to add to that. Um, just like most of you, we have our career tech uh, courses. Um, we have, uh, so, so pretty much, uh, 
pretty much we have anything that a student would want to do. We're going to we're going to define a career path for them so they can pursue their uh, interest and, and their passions. If we don't have that, we partner with Tulsa Tech, we partner with Tulsa Community College, and then the only piece that was really missing in the last couple years were the internships, and that's that's what we're going to talk about mostly today. Uh, but kind of wanted to give you a broad overview of uh, what we're doing here at Charles Page and, and how we are. Uh, giving choices for our students. We really pride ourselves on being a school of choice. We want students to follow their passions and their interests, and we're here to guide them through that process. One thing that um, we implemented last year, this was our first year to do this, um, because we, we have all these pathways and we're trying to funnel students into a pathway and we want to see completion. We want to be able to track our progress and see if we're being successful or not. And so we implemented a senior capstone experience last year um, to where all seniors must complete a, a capstone and they can complete this capstone in three different ways. One, if they're on a college path, yeah, they, they can earn college credit by either passing AP exam or taking concurrent enrollment. The second way that they can complete their capstone is to be enrolled in a Tulsa Tech program that leads to industry certification or being a concentrator in one of the CTE programs here on our campus. The third way, and, and this is where we're going today, is with an internship in their career pathway. Um, and so out of our 409 seniors last year, we had 389 complete a senior capstone. So we didn't get to everybody, but in first year of our implementation, we, we were very successful, I think. And it's just kind of a way for us to track our progress and to see uh, if students are actually completing their career path. So that's kind of an overview of where we are as a school, kind of kind of our broad topics and how we do things. Um, to get to that point, there were a couple of things that um, we did along the way that were vital. The, the one that I'm going to focus on today is we had uh, what we called a business forum, and that was um, what, what we did is we invited pretty much every business in the Sand Springs community to the school. We, we served lunch. We, we just wanted to get them in all in one room together so we could pitch this idea of internships and uh, partnerships with them and our ICAP process to them. And um, once we, we figured once we could get them in a room together, then we, we can get across our story and, and really start to build those uh, partnerships. And so we had a business forum and the rest of this presentation is going to be um, kind of how we pitched this idea to our business partners because this, it, this was the key for us. You know, we, we had a partnership with uh, Tulsa Community College for our college going kids and that pathway was set. We had a great partnership with Tulsa Tech and our CTE programs. So those paths were set, but we, a couple of years ago, we didn't quite have a, a really solid internship program. And this was the key to get to where we need to be. So we welcomed all of our business partners. We had this business forum. Um, we invited everybody and I would say we had over 100 businesses, separate businesses on our campus at the same time. And um, like I said, this was, this was the key to our success. So the rest of this presentation is going to be kind of how we pitched it. And I'll go into some specifics as we move forward. So if you can imagine a, a, a big room with uh, business partners all in here, they don't even know why they're there at this point. And so 
we start talking about our career pathways model and how by partnering with them that we can grow our local economy. And so as, as you can imagine, they're, they're a little bit skeptical. Um, and, and we, uh, we just trudge forward and, and begin to present this plan to them and describe essentially what we just described to you and how we work as a, as a school. Uh, Laura hit on this earlier as she was talking about the state's ICAP plan, and, and this is something that we described to them, um, and this is kind of our district-wide plan of how we do ICAP. The career awareness, uh, like Laura said, is really um, our elementary schools really work on career awareness with guest speakers. They're part of junior achievement. They do all kinds of things just to bring awareness to all the careers that are out there. As students transition into middle school, they start to explore um, careers of their interest. And then as they move into high school, we start preparing them for those career um, by, by, by our career pathways model that we've talked about. And, and the main thing that we're talking about today is internships and, and this is where we started to sell this to our business partners that were sitting in this business forum. Okay, we wanted, we wanted our business partners to see that there's a need that our students really uh, wanted to take advantage of internships out in our local community and uh, be a part of that. So we, we sent out a survey to all of our seniors this was one of the questions on the survey. And um, as you can see, the, the four and the five there uh, were agree or strongly disagree that they would take advantage of an internship uh, opportunity. So 64% of our students said that they would have taken um, that opportunity. And, and so we're, as we're talking to our business partners, we're we're showing them that our, our kids want to be out in your businesses getting these uh, real world experiences under their belt before they leave Charles Page High School and go out into the real world. So the need was there. <clears throat> so one thing that we wanted to make sure while our business partners were in this room is that, you know, we, we were asking for any help that we could get. Where do you fit in? Can you provide an internship? Can you provide an industry tour? Maybe you can't do a full-fledged internship. Can, can we send students to job shadow with you? Uh, can you come to us and guest speak for our kids? So we wanted to make sure that, uh, because not everybody could do an internship, and that, that was the main thing that we were asking for at that time but we wanted to, to make sure that uh, if they wanted to be a part, we wanted them. We, we want to build that relationship with them and see what they can do to help our kids. And uh, that, that was a big part for them. A lot of them at the time were a little scared to do an internship. They had a lot of questions and, and weren't really, um, they, they just didn't know. <laughs> So as we started to explain the internship process to them, you know, the, we tried to make it really simple for them. Really what we're doing is we were asking them to hire CPHS kids and for the school to kind of be the buffer there and to provide support for them and for uh, the student as they go through this process. Um, I will say most of our internships are paid internships. And so I, I would say probably 95% of them are paid internships. And so that helped us out a lot um, with questions that were coming up based on insurance and, and liability uh, and things like that. So we wanted to define um, everybody's role in this process to them. Uh, one of the big things I think that um, we can kind of hang our hat on here at CPHS is that we uh, require our students to go through 
a soft skills class. It's a prerequisite to be in an internship. And um, that's something that, 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 that's our way of supporting both the, both the business partner and the student as they go through this process, uh, you know. Um, and so as we, as we were sitting in the business forum, we, we wanted everybody to see their roles and, and then we got a little more specific uh, as we went. Guys, if there are any questions in the chat box, be sure to let me know so I can, I can address those. We, we put this in there uh, because one of the main questions with our business partners were, uh, when can the students be there? You know, they, they were worried about, well, if they're coming the last hour of school or the last couple hours of school, that's about when some of them are closing down or it's too late in the day. Uh, and, and so they didn't know if at the end of the day would work. Some of them would prefer at the beginning of the day, some even in the middle of the day. And, and like Mr. Trout uh, touched on earlier, if anything else, we are flexible. We are going to push those boundaries and, and uh, our, our virtual academy allows us to do that, to be flexible in our scheduling. And you can kind of see uh, different student schedules here. These are real student schedules. Uh, and I just pulled a few uh, so you could look at them. Um, and really as a senior, if students are on track to graduate and their credits are in good shape, the possibilities are endless for us with, with our virtual piece uh, there. And so like you're looking at here, these students might only be on campus on our actual campus uh, an hour a day. Some of them might not ever set foot on our campus if they're doing virtual, uh, taking part in, in a TCC class uh, or in an internship program. So this was, a, this was big for our businesses to see how flexible we can be in scheduling. We didn't want this to be a barrier. We said our message to them was if you want an intern, we will make it happen, period. And so our counselors didn't really like us at this point, but um, they, they work their magic in and we make it work for students, uh, for each individual student. So this, I'm going to talk a little bit about our, what we call our workforce preparation course. Uh, and this is that prerequisite class that students must take before they enter into an internship. Um, we put this in place uh, mainly because we didn't want our kids going out there into our community unprepared. And um, we knew that if we didn't give, if we didn't prepare them, then the long, the longevity of this program probably wouldn't be there because uh, we felt like we might lose business partners along the way if you know we're sending a kid out there and they're not doing the things that they need to be doing. And so students go through our workforce preparation course and we're teaching real soft skills, communication. Um, that, that, that's the main thing, communication, flexibility, um, how to um, write resumes, interview skills, uh, while students are in this workforce preparation class, this is where they're actually looking for their internship. Okay, so if I'm a, if I'm a student and I'm in this class and I want to go into the manufacturing field, then uh, the, the teacher in this workforce preparation course is contacting businesses on our partner list. And, and they're going through this process and trying to find their internship uh, for when the semester's over, they can go right into it from the workforce preparation class. Um, Brian, if, if I could yeah. insert a comment, I'm kind of going back one topic to the business forum, and I apologize for that. But yeah. I think one of the key points to make with our success, about our success with our business community and how receptive they were to us pitching this program is that the answer to pretty much every question they had was yes. 
as they came to us and they asked, can I have an intern in the morning? Can I, what if I need an intern during the middle of the day? How is it going to work if I need an intern all day? And that is where our virtual curriculum, our adaptability in blending schedules in this soft skills class that Ryan is speaking of right now, we offered a virtual option for that as well. We created a virtual curriculum and the students were able to complete this requirement online concurrently with serving their internship if that is what they needed. So um, I can't emphasize enough that the success that you'll have with your business community is going to be dependent upon how flexible you are at meeting their needs and their requests. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, why soft skills? I don't know if anybody's ever seen this. I'll play a little bit of it. it it's about two minutes, um, so I won't, I won't take all your time, but you'll get the point real quick. Amy, it says you are trained in technology. That's very good. Are you adept at Excel? No. PowerPoint? No. Publisher? Not really. Exactly in what area of technology mm -hmm. are you proficient? <laughs> Snapchat, Pinterest, Instagram, Vine, Twitter, you know the big ones. I'm surprised you didn't say Facebook. <laughs> That's for old people, like my parents. <laughs> so I think you get the point. With that, that's what we didn't want to, uh, to happen as we're sending our students out into uh, the community. And that's where I'm talking about the longevity of the program. We want, we want this thing to last. And so we need to prepare our kids before we send them out there. And, and that's what our workforce preparation course is all about, is, is getting them out there and, and so they can be successful. Um, so, so the next question pretty much our, our business partners had was, okay, how's, how are we gonna, how's this all gonna work? And so we wanted to define that for them and, and really it's just like uh, they, would, they would hire anybody. Um, as our students are completing the soft skills course and uh, we're, we're reaching out to businesses across our community um, and asking them for internship positions as as businesses contact us and say hey I've got a position here we post that um, in in this class and across our campus students apply for it um, myself and Miss Spears who who was uh, teaching the workforce preparation course would narrow that list down to, to roughly 10 students and uh, businesses would come in, they would conduct interviews um, and then they would select who they want. And, and that, that was a key piece of this process too, because we wanted, we don't want this to be a gimme for our students. We don't, we don't want to say, Hey, we don't want a situation where they, they say, I want to be in this internship and bam, they got it. No, that's not how the real world works. We want them to have to go through that internship or that interview process. And so uh, we also ask our businesses to, once they conduct an interview, to stop and give those students some pointers. Uh, talk to them about um, the interview and how they could maybe do better. We, we, uh, we had some students cry from that um, and we had, a, we had some awkward situations, but that's part of it. And that's those moments, uh, I think, um, uh, were very, very teachable. Uh, just thinking about that student who, who broke down, had a breakdown. Um, what I can say is when, when they go interview again for another job, that won't be the first interview that they've had. And that's a big piece of this. Um, and then the last thing is we just maintain school and community partnership. And what I mean by that is myself and, and uh, other people who are part of the program are in constant uh, contact with our, with our partners. Okay. Uh, this was another big piece. So, we, so again, we have all of these business partners in the same room at the same time, and we weren't gonna let them get out of there 
without getting their contact information. And so uh, we gave them a commitment card. We actually gave them a whole folder with these four things on there. With the commitment card, we had um, a junior achievement workplace host and volunteer forms. We had every form possible there for them so they could fill them out and leave them with us if they wanted. But the main thing that we wanted to get from them was this commitment card. So we, we uh, got their name, their organization, and their email. Um, and then they checked everything that they were willing to do. So, so we ended up making a big spreadsheet of everything that they had committed to. And then so throughout the year, we could, we could contact them. That, and that was the, the commitment card um, was a huge piece in our success. Uh, it just gave us someone to call, someone to ask uh, without having to go out and knock on doors. Um, and then you can see there on the, la the, the last thing on the commitment card is hire CPHS grads because really that's what it all boils down to is we are tr trying to prepare our students for when they leave here, they're, they're college or career ready. They're either going on to college or they're heading into the workforce prepared and, and ready to be successful. So the, the rest here, I, I just have a few pictures of, of kind of some of the things that we've done. Um, definitely need to do a better job of taking pictures and documenting this stuff. Uh, you just get going and, and get busy and forget to do that. But uh, big kudos here to Mr. Trout, uh, really because he allowed us to uh, disrupt the school day a lot because I mean we would call over the intercom hey anybody interested in hearing Tulsa Fire Department talk or uh, Webco Industries uh, come talk about their manufacturing facility um, and and students would come and I, yeah I know that's that's disruptive to the school day or can be but we're putting such an emphasis on careers uh, that, that this is this is something that we needed to do and it's something that we did and we're we're really excited and proud of the work that we've done here bringing people on to our campus it not only it not only gives insight to our students about different businesses but it gives those businesses insight to what we are doing and just helps us build that uh, partnership We, we went on a lot of industry tours across um, our community and, and into the Tulsa area. And as you can see, our students had a blast doing it. Um, and out of these industry tours come internship opportunities. And, and so this was a, another key for us. And then here are a few pictures of, of our internships and one one that we're really proud of on, on the left hand side there, we had, there, there's only four pictured here, but we had seven students go through an internship at Tulsa Fire Department where they were working with uh, the Tulsa Fire rookies at their training facility. They would go in every morning, and this is where I'm talking about being flexible was key. They went in for three hours every morning they sat in class with them and then they would go out into their training facility and work side by side with them. They did that first semester. Second semester, they uh, transitioned to Sand Springs Fire where they were actually working in the firehouse uh, at, the, at the fire station. So, man, what a great experience these guys have. Uh, our Sand Springs Fire Department also started to get them um, uh, their certifications that they needed for paramedics. And so just, just the partnership and working with them, these guys are prepared. They're, they are ready. They're ready to go into to the next stage of their career. That's just one example. Um, so at the end of the year, uh, we, well, not the end of the year. As we had our career fair, we also tagged on with our career fair and internship recognition where we invited 
um, our business partners uh, back uh, to, to our campus and so we could recognize them and their intern as we, um, excuse me, as we, uh, we, we just wanted to recognize them and uh, if we invited them to be a part of our internship recognition, most of them stayed for our career fair too. And so we tried to combine those two to, to make it a, a bigger deal. Um, and we had, we had a lot of businesses come. We, we kind of talked about each student and, and their experience. The, this particular student here, this is Logan. And uh, he was interning with KKT Architects. Uh, KKT Architects did, um, we, we are remodeling our ninth grade center and it's, it's actually going on the front of Charles Page High School. And so we're moving our ninth grade center to our campus. KKT Architects were, uh, they designed it. And so Logan worked with them. He, he um, attended our const weekly construction meetings. Logan is uh, this year going to the University of Arkansas. Um, to be in their architecture program. And so what a great experience he had uh, working with them. And that's, that's one example there. These guys worked with Platinum Mechanical and we had a lot of, we have a lot of construction um, internships. We have Platinum Mechanical, Crosland Construction, LD Kearns, uh, Callan Construction. We had a lot of interns in those. Um, the guy here on the right, uh, that's Jonah, and he was working with Platinum Mechanical at the Osage Casino, and so he, he loved it. Uh, the guy in the middle, that's Spencer. He worked um, at the Tulsa Tech Lim Limley campus as they've, they've been constructing their beautiful new facility. And then Alan there on the left, he was with um, a subcontractor who did sheetrock and, and, and he also loved it. And th these guys just cherished that opportunity. And uh, I, I think, um, you know, uh, just a lot of our students don't do traditional school very well. And this program got them on track. And, and I, I firmly believe that. And I think Mr. Ray, who, who manages our discipline and intervention system, would tell you that he saw a tremendous turnaround in, in his numbers as well due to this program. Give you a couple more examples here. This is Kendriana and Miss Mandy, who runs Miss Mandy's daycare here in town. Kendriana is going to be a teacher. She wants to be an elementary teacher. And she took off sixth and seventh hour uh, of the day and went and, and helped out at Miss Mandy's. She did a fantastic job. Okay, and this is the last example I'll give you and, and probably the most touching to me. Um, the, the gentleman there, um, his name is Gage. He, he struggles and his family uh, struggles. And um, Gage was hired on as a night custodian through, through the Sand Springs District. And he worked here at the high school from the time school let out and, until about eight at night. And so Gage, Gage was uh, bringing home a paycheck for his family, if I'm being honest, and, and turned the kid's life around, really, really helped out the whole family. The, the other two girls there, that's uh, Heaven and Lauren, and they worked with our, with the district and, and produced uh, IT videos and, and really worked on that path. Um, and so, again, th those are just a few examples. If I was giving you some numbers, we had um, over 160 students, uh, seniors, and again, we have 409 seniors in our building. We had over 160 out in our community in internships. Um, and again, 
the reason I, I wanted to do this presentation as we were in the business forum. The business forum was the key. You got it. You've got to get them on your campus. You've got to get them all in one spot get their contact information and then bug them until they they say yes and, and that's what we've done and so that's kind of our story i will stop sharing my screen and uh answer some questions if we have some questions you sure do and thank you so much principal trout uh he answered a lot of them already that were coming in great um, so want to direct everyone's attention to a couple of those questions that have already been answered about transportation, um, curriculum for the soft skills class, um, internship, uh, what to do if kids drop an internship, and then whether or not NCRC levels are used. Those have all been addressed in the chat box. And you can also save the chat box if you want to go back later. Um, one question that has been asked across really all of our ICAP meetings um, has been how do you handle insurance and liability for unpaid internships? Right, and, and that was a huge question in the beginning. Um, and so, like I, like I said, about 95%, <clears throat> excuse me, of our internships are paid. And so, once they're paid, our business's insurance, the, our business partner insurance takes over. Uh, we also, um, partnered with Junior Achievement um, and as our businesses filled out their forms and become a partner with them, um, Junior Achievement provides some insurance. Um, and then <clears throat> for those, those businesses that would not become part of Junior Achievement, our, our district purchase would, said that they would purchase individual insurance uh, for that. So, so again, Ms. Durkee, who, who, Superintendent Durkee, who's not here with us today, you know, she said her thing was there, if there's an obstacle, we're going to take care of it. This is what we need to do for students. And so her leadership ha ha has been vital in this uh, and just, just letting us be able to, to go and to do what we need to do. Um, it actually ended up being a fairly sh narrow mm -hmm. subsection that where liability insurance was an issue. It turned out to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, it was students working with mechanical, with heavy equipment or machinery who were unpaid. Those are the only students who would not be covered by the employees, the employers, excuse me, uh, liability insurance. And we ended up with not many of those, if any, I don't think. Um, right. Our kids are funny. They're not going to work if they don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's just who they are. Makes sense. Can I jump um, in on this and kind okay. of uh, put put my, my take on um, somebody that's kind of outside of the ICAP but works within the group? Um, certainly this is, when we when we first started talking about, you know, diving in with ICAP, I thought my job would be basically the same. I deal with uh, interventions, academic interventions, discipline interventions, um, and of course attendance interventions. And I thought things wouldn't change much for me, but that that was uh, I was wrong. Um, really, everything we do works with the ICAP, and all of our programming really meshes well together. And what we've seen, the way it's impacted our school, obviously, my job is to get those underclassmen to the point where they can work towards an internship in that soft skills class. Uh, what we saw. Um, is all of our numbers for the better. Everything was for the better. We, we started some restorative practices uh, programming here and students are really engaged now because they see the end result. They see that if they plug in and are engaged in school and stay on the right track that there's an end game for them. Being an internship and they're seeing their peers, they're the people they look up to uh, working and having a ball and, and enjoying that, that environment. So it's really impacted what we do too. All of our interventions at the forefront of those conversations are your career academic plan. Where are you, what are you working towards? What are you going for? So for, for one thing that, I, that really is eye-opening to me, we, on average, we would, we would average about 30 long-term long suspensions per year for the last decade. And I know we had a shortened year last year, but we, we got that down to six. So it's a significant difference, and I think a lot of it has to do with ICAP and our programming and working that, meshing that together. And, 
you know, like what I would tell somebody who is getting ready to implement this is, is dive in like, like Brian has done. And it, it's going to impact your whole school, your culture. And um, it's been great for us. It really fits our community, obviously. But uh, I, it's increased all of our numbers, our graduation rate, our attendance, and obviously our discipline has gone way down. So really it's just made my job a lot easier. And it's all that programming really works well together and meshes well together with, you know, the existing programs that everyone does, the RTI and all those kind of things. But also, you know, the supplemental things that we put in, it all works towards ICAP because like I said, a lot of our kids are, these are the, these are the students they're looking up to. These are the guys that they see and um, there's an end game and it's not so far off. You know, it's a year or two away. So they, they stay on track. And that, if, that, I, I, if I could kind of throw that in. If I could brag on Tim here yeah. just a minute as, as, as an illustration for how that works, Tim has created a reentry program for our suspended students. Um, he calls it WARP. Uh, we always return with the plan. We're all about the acronyms at Charles Beach High School. We have an acronym for everything, I think. But part of what he does in that is he teaches the seven habits of highly effective teenagers. And part of that process is having them set goals and career goals and aligning their return to school with having a specific career plan and a reason for being in high school. And then he monitors those kids and meets with them monthly to make sure that they're staying on track with that. So that's a really good example of how all of our initiative, initiatives sort of work together and how the ICAP and the career internships truly is the capstone to the whole experience. Fantastic. I do have one very brief question about parent involvement. And for those students whose parents are very busy or who are unable to be as involved as, you know, com completing paperwork, are there options for those students that, um, that, they, that can, they can still participate in these opportunities? We have really leaned hard on our counseling staff. Our counseling staff are the, are the warriors who have direct daily contact with our students and their families. And we have yet to have a situation and Engage Floyd is the perfect example that, that Ryan mentioned, our student who worked as an intern for our custodial staff. Um, it is hard to imagine, I won't go into detail, but it's hard to imagine a student having less parental support than that young man. Um, but Ms. Roulette, who manages his case, dug in, stuck with it, contacted those parents, and got them to do the things that are necessary to have Gage have access to the opportunities that are available to him here at Charles Page High School. So I wish that I had all of those, those beautiful people who manage our counseling staff here with us, because they're the ones who really manage that for us. Well, thank you so much, um, Principal Trout, Assistant Principal Vivian, and Ass Assistant Principal Ray. We are so grateful for the time that you've invested with us today and for all of the um, incredible information that you've shared. It sounds like your team has really figured out how to work collaboratively um, in the interest of all students to be uh, adept and adaptable to the needs of your business community um, and to really um, help students see their agency and their uh, capacity to set goals for themselves and to work for those goals. So we're so grateful and thank you also for including the link to the presentation in the chat box. We will um, be sending that out. Really quickly, I do want to share one more thing with the group that we're very excited about. Um, this is an upcoming, hopefully, let's see, it will share. Can, hopefully you can see preparing students um, for post-secondary. Um, so we have an event coming up next Thursday uh, with the uh, Gina Nelson, Oklahoma Teacher of the Year, and Lisa Hefner, Oklahoma Teacher of the Year finalist. And they are going to be speaking about some of these exact things um, from, from a, the perspective um, of a middle school teacher and then a high school teacher. Um, so we'd love for you to join us. I will put the link to this event in the chat box so that you can access it. Um, but again, as we close, want to extend a huge thank you um, to uh, 
Mr. Trout, Mr. Vivint, and Mr. Ray for your time with us and sharing your expertise. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for having us. I've, as you can tell, I'm blessed with a great team. Other than cheating at golf, I have no complaints about these guys. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll stick around for a few minutes. I'm going to try and get this chat box to get the link that I told you about, but um, we'll, we'll stick around for any questions. And, uh, and thank you for joining us to our participants and to our special guests. Laura, I put my email in the chat box for anybody that wants to discuss. I'd love to talk to anybody and maybe pick their brains a little bit too. Uh, we're always trying to improve our process, so. That sounds fantastic. I'll include, if that's okay with you, I'll also include it in the follow-up email so that folks have, have access. Yes. Thank you so much for answering those questions in real time. That was so impressive. <laughs> Wow, so that's the slide with all of the businesses is just so impressive. I've seen it before and I was impressed the first time. I think this may be my second time seeing it and it's just, it's so cool. Um, so thank you for sharing.